ladies and gentlemen, the first customer delivery in Sweden of the eighth generation of the 911. I think we have seen this scenery a hundred times on different YouTube channels. The new car is parked under the blanket. But what happens before it's parked on its delivery hall? PDI stands for Pre-Delivery Inspection. The first 992 in Sweden. It's black. Welcome. There is a lot of protection on the um, cars when they arrive. It is um, not the entire car, but on sensitive spots where scratches or damage might be done. The wheels are well covered and also roof front and inside. I'm going to actually remove this part here. This is the protection for the, for the um, instrument cluster. I'm going to save this. <laughs> this is not going into the trash. It's a lot of protection to remove inside and down floor mats is put in the right position. New protection for the floor, steering wheel, driver seats and transport wipers is replaced. The work continues outside removing protection. The 992 is connected for the first time at the local computer at the Porsche Center. The first step is to unlock the car, kind of starting the car up from a transport or factory mode to road mode. And that's why we have connected the PVs into the car and do the adjustment needed. From the PVs, we have actually downloaded the user manual and it is stored in an SD card and the only thing I'm going to do now is push it into the car and transfer it. Ha! Huh, I'm actually helping preparing the vehicle. I'm going to continue helping out the workshop and this is a bit of administration. So this is the uh, warranty and maintenance book and I'm going to put the identifications that come with the car and make sure that this particular book is authentic towards the car. So it's quite straightforward. I, I try to remove this one here. It's, it's, it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's just a normal German procedure of having a lot of paperwork. You should know that, that Germans are not digital. They are so, so, so much into papers. Here we are, bang, your uh, vehicle identification, Actually, I'm doing some great work here because I'm going to put the, today's date and it is the 1st of March. Whew. And then the odometer and this particular vehicle has done 12 kilometers. The last thing that we need to do is to stamp it. Whoa! This is going to be so exciting. Actually, I am right now authorcate this car as being delivered. Three, two, one, go! It's done. The owner of this vehicle will have some proper YouTube authorcations and I can guarantee that this car is made in Germany and provided and sold in Sweden. 
21 inch rear wheel. Everybody has talked about it, but when you actually face them this close and the width, I mean, for real, the width of this tire, oh, it's spectacular. And this 992, the first in Sweden, will hit the streets in March, where the weather is, well, it's sunny, rainy, and snowy in Sweden. And it's gonna be a lot of wet roads, and that's where you should go with the, with the uh, European winter tires. If you haven't seen the, the um, video where I explain the differences from the win no European winter tires up to the Nordic studded and non-studded, please have a look. But this car is gonna have some spectacular wheels on and I'm gonna test drive it. Yes, you heard me right. front lip of the car is actually different depending how you equip your car. This is the front lip of the PASP Sport suspension. These um, rubber, well actually it's not rubber, it's um, soft plastic. They are three of them mounted on the damper to make sure that the damper does not get full compression. So the reason for that is to make sure that the car will not dip making the car you know, too low when the car is loaded and unloaded from boats and trucks. And these, ladies and gentlemen, needs to be removed. The car is ready for its final stage, a proper wash. It's not rocket science, just a normal wash, decreasing high pressure wash, shampoo, water, and the drying. Final touch is the quick polish. George Carabet, one of Porsche's top 100 sales representative in the world. Congratulations. Thank you. How does it feel to take delivery of the first 992 in Sweden? It feels great. I feel honored and it will be, it will be exciting to deliver the car to the customer. I feel quite privileged to be present here during the delivery. Should we pull the blanket and uh, meet the owner? Yeah, we should. Yes, I know, it's not funny. I'm the owner of the first 992 being delivered in Sweden. And uh, I didn't get the opportunity to option her out. Yeah, 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 don't get, you know, don't shout. Get, get back, to, back to it. The second car I purchased without specifying it myself. But think about it. How many times do you get the opportunity to buy the very first of any generation? And my plan is to really show you how it is from an owner's perspective in a 992. If you subscribe, it will be easy for you to catch up on all the episodes with the 992. But to be honest, if I look at my audience, we are about 35 to 55 years old. And apparently, towards the information I have been given from YouTube, only young people subscribe. But I'm extremely happy that you view my videos because I have just reached over 100,000 views each month. Thank you. And I'm gonna give you my first impression right away. But I would like to start here instead of inside the vehicle in the presentation. In fact, I would like to jump into the platform. This is the MMB platform, and it stands for M Modular Mid-Engine Platform. Yes, you heard me right. The new 992 shares this platform together with the beautiful Audi R8. They are siblings, just like the 718. Spectacular, it's a mid-engine platform. And remember my statements during 2018 when I fell in love with the 718. 
and I end up at a point where I look at the beautiful 911 and if it does not have the rear axle steering I would jump in to the 718 from a B-World drive. So this is the MMB platform from Porsche. Here we have the different models in the 911 range, meaning Coupe, Cabrillo, Targa, and on the 718, the Coupe and Cabrillo. And this is very important because the, this will make it more profitable for Porsche to produce the vehicles, but also it will be easier to share some of the components. Also looking at the brakes, there is a clear signal that the 992 has become a more mid-engine car where we could just see it through the diameter of the brake discs. In the front and on the rear, you will have the same diameter of 350 diameters on the Carrera S and the 4S. And the only differences between the front and the rear axle is the thickness of the discs where the front has 34 millimeter, the rear saddles with 28. Remember that I always said when you option out your 991 Gen 2, always take the rear axle steering to get that direct steering and the agility that you, know, that you love when you perform the art of driving. With the Gen 1 of the 992, they have managed to decrease and make it more direct steer by 10% without the rear axle steering and 6% with rear axle steering. And I'm curious to find out how important that option is. And believe me, I will come back to you in that regard. Steering wheel, first impression, spectacular. That was the first thing I noticed that could not be explained from pictures. And then we have the... Wait a minute. Oh my gosh, Tony, I'm in trouble. I need socks. All right. I need socks, quickly. Oh, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh. Oh, Whew, that was a close one. The interior is spectacular. It has a you know, close connection back to the 60s, something I really like. That goes for the Rev Counter. If you have the possibility, try to experience it live. It is, a, it is an enjoyment just by itself. Effects of having a mid-engine platform is the engine mount. It is dramatically changed, actually very much. 168 millimeter forward and, uh, is the main engine mount compared to the 991. Also, it's much wider with 113 millimeter. I'm overwhelmed of the rear design. When I looked at pictures before, yeah, I saw it live. I, had so many thoughts about the design and I haven't I have even seen YouTube videos where they redesigned the car looking much more like the 991. Take it easy and experience the 992 live before you make up your opinion. The roundings around the rear lines has never been so distinctive on this vehicle compared to its predecessor. The PAUS stop light or braking lights are spectacular. It was inspired by a PAUS button from, you know, a video or, or a, I don't know, movie or YouTube or whatever. Because a Porsche never stops. It's just take a brief pause and continues. And the ribs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven. I hope you have seen my Macan review where I was excited of the new braking system. It is a direct heritage from the 918 Spider. It actually reduces the weight by 41% compared to the 991 version. So what they have done is that they have reversed the entire feeling in the brake pedal. So if you have the pedal ratio 
on this axle and the pedal travel on this axle, when you drive the 991 and put the foot on the brake pedal, you will get some quite a lot of braking force immediately. Well, if you drive an older 911, you will have to build up the pressure through the tra pedal travel. And the excitement of that is when you drive on the race truck, for an ex example, you will apply the brake and you would like to have an accelerating braking force to get stability through your braking area. And the good thing is when you have done your braking, you're done, you are at the apex and, and you're going to sorry, turn into the apex, you release the foot from the paddle. And then you would like to control the release to make sure that the car doesn't drive away from you. And that's what you can do with the new setup. I'm quite excited to try this out in real life. Looking at the uh, body weight of the 911s through history, you can see that from the 993 version to the 996, especially to the 997, we have a lot of heart towards the 997, but it is a very heavy vehicle. So with the 993, 996, 997, we had decrease of, of the body weight. And with the 991, it was for the first time changing the curves and the 992 take that heritage and decreasing it 5% more. In fact, 12 she, she, kilo less compared to the predecessor. When I first took a look at the specification of this vehicle, my eyes caught up on the edging trim straps in aluminium, something that I actually wouldn't considering option out if I would have option out the 992. Then I saw the wheels as well and hmm, I wasn't sure. But when I saw this car live for the first time in a black metallic, a yet black metallic, I must admit my mind changed it a bit. Tinted windows or not, I'm not sure, but I don't want to drive around in a car that looked like a hearse. And for me at least, it was a good decision to tint the front window as well. Let's talk about the turbos. So not only the design of the 992 was inspired by the 930 turbo. Looking at the intercooler displacement on the 991 Gen 2, they were on the side of the vehicle. And what they have done with the 992, I'm guessing that since they have moved the engine a bit forward and the engine mount is more forward, they will get more room because in the old version that we had some engine mounts in the front of the engine. And what we can do in this case is that we will place the intercoolers and the effect of that is that we will get colder air into the engine and as a consequence more power. And looking at the power curves between the 991 Gen 2 comp and, and the 992, well, you can see that the, with the turbo, we are creating a flat curve when it comes to the uh, torque. And that's why most of us, like myself, we will actually drive a turbocharged machine today faster compared to the na natural aspirated because we will have the proper torque to get out of corners and you know controlling the car with the gas pedal. The increase are as always moderate but to be honest I don't believe in these numbers because with all the changes they have done towards the 992 mm, I actually think it is a bit faster. In fact they are pushing this number that Porsche has has done themselves so much that I don't believe in it. I think it could perform much, much better. It's a mid-engine platform. The engine mount has been moved. The, the torque and the power has increased. The only downside is the 55 kilos. And when you meet the 992 live for the first time, get low, get low and look at the design lines that the new 992 represents. By the way, the chrome sport exhaust quite look good to the other chrome details on the car. I think we all have a discussed the beautiful rear wing. Well I say beautiful because when I saw the pictures I was like oh what are they doing? 
But now when I see it live, I've changed my opinion. In certain angles, it even looks like that it is a duct-held equipped car. And perhaps it's easier to look at the new design lines from a black car perspective where, you know, the lines are a bit softened. Taking delivery of your 992 and the 8 generate the 911 should be done at Porsche Center Stockholm because together with Richard Yulin, they have provided a unique sparkling wine, alcoholic free, that is delivered to you in an air controlled box. And in it you will of, of course find a bottle of the spectacular wine, but also a box containing the key to drive away with your portion. Finally, the delivery has been done and I'm gonna take my very first drive in the 992. I'm gonna bring you guys along on my entire journey. Time. In a certain way, an unconditional concept. On the other hand, very fascinating. Memory connects everything that lies in the past and some statements will reverb long into the future. It is said, I believe, that so many creations today are just like all the rest. Independence, then, has always been the attitude at Porsche. To do not what is expected, but what we feel is right. We all have a desire to create something that will show we were here. And did something of value to create something timeless. A timeless creation, something that remains over the years and it will let us travel through time in our minds. 